Hello YouTube, it's Doss Greg here. And hold the phone, wait, what is this? This isn't KDE, where's my KDE at? Where's my desktop? Oh my goodness, this is all so strange. It's not too bad though. I could get used to it. Hmm. Well guys, as the title and the description says, this is i3. Now, recently, Irish has started learning how to use Gen 2, and I've tried to give him a point or two, although he's a sharp cookie. He knows a lot more than I do when it comes to some of these things, like window managers. And he challenged me this week to try something outside my comfort zone. He challenged me to look at a window manager, and I said, okay, which one? Because there's lots. I've looked at Awesome before, i3, <sighs> Herbst Luft, WM, a few. And honestly, I've tried them, but I just haven't had the ability to stick with it. So he says, Das, you got to do this. You just try it for a week. Try it for... For at least maybe two weeks just see what you do and I said you know what I'll put my little toe in maybe my big toe we'll check it out I always got my KDE on the back side I can always just go Psh. there we go back into my comfort area but I want to do this video talk about i3 for a little bit it took a little bit of getting used to everything is keyboard centric in regards to your shortcuts you can still use your mouse but not the way you would think it took me a good half a day just to get used to how to get my windows where i want them with the horizontal vertical placement one here two there etc but there are some pretty neat features about i3 that i'll talk about another big thing that I find is really nice is that it seems to be much more responsive since it isn't a bloated uh, desktop environment. Uh, KDE isn't, it's just large. I mean when you think about KDE and GNOME, GNOME depending how you want to say that, uh, they're just the beefier heavy duty desktop environments. Now, I do have an interesting analogy about this. The way I look at i3 or a window manager is kind of how Gen 2, Ubuntu, and things like that are. And I look at KDE is equivalent to, say, a distribution like Mint and Ubuntu. Because when you start KDE, everything just works. Everything's set up. Maybe not in Gen 2 because you've got to know what you're doing to configure everything. But in general, it's just going to have pretty much everything that you need to do to operate most of the functionality. The simple stuff is all going to be there. Whereas in something like i3, you start it up and you've got this blank screen with absolutely nothing and you're going, ah, did it work? Because I got a black screen. And unless you install the D menu, unless you install the i3 status bar, a few things like that, you're kind of screwed in the idea that you don't have a clue what to do next. And thank goodness I had Irish backing me up. He was joining my IRC channel and helping me out a lot with this. And I appreciate that. He really knows his stuff and he has some excellent videos on his site at the uh, Linux distribution community. And he has about 10 or so just on i3 alone. He has a few on Awesome and Herbstluft WM. And I encourage anybody who wants to see how i3 is installed, how to get it going, how to bling it up, check out his videos because they're really good. But i3 is kind of like getting Gen 2 for the first time. You have nothing given to you. 
you get a prompt and you gotta figure it all out now once you get it on and you look at it it's pretty nifty over here for instance I've got H top running which is showing my processes uh, what's going on here how much memory I'm using and you'll say hold the phone DOS look at that memory usage you're using 1.3 gigs I thought this was supposed to be a lightweight window manager not some bloated one like kitty kitty uses about 1.1 1 .1 to 1.3 the thing is as soon as you start opening up a lot of programs like I've got this video capture thing here I've got simple screen recorder and another screen recording I've got chromium in another phase plus we've got this really nifty file manager here PC man FM which is lightweight and really reminds me a lot of dolphin which is what I kinda like because I'm familiar with it now one thing I do want to point out um, if you think that oh I'm using KDE and I want to try this out and you just think you're going to be able to use all your applications from KDE we go into a new window here let's say three I've now I've gone ahead and put my my um, desktop wallpaper there but if we open up D menu which is the mod key and D and we try to open up Dolphin because we have it installed we get this picture that just is difficult to see and not very usable. I mean, you can still use it, but you can't. I can't see any of this, and my icons are missing. Everything kind of looks bad. So we use a Shift Alt Q to get out of it, and Alt D. And I have created myself a script for Dolphin that actually tells it to use KDE as its backend, but run it in i3. And if we do that, everything looks perfect. And as you can see. When we go back here, it looks a lot like this right here, which is that lighter weight PC Man FM. So if you don't want the bloat of Dolphin, then use this, and you've got it pretty much looking good. And of course, as you can see, too, in my, in my little icon here from uh, Screen Fetch, or Fetch Screen, uh, this is showing that I'm still using the Breeze Dark GDK 2.3 theme, and the icon theme is still Breeze because I really haven't changed too much of that in the theming process and of course this is using the theming too from this and I've made my own kind of themes I'm still using if you'll notice this is console still I have been trying to find a lightweight terminal to use and honestly it just stick with console because it works it's configured I've looked at a few others and I'm like eh. in fact you know just to give an example if we go back to this area here, close this, and if we try to open up a different console, like um, RX uh, VT, I think it is. Let's see if it'll. There we go. See, for some reason, now I've changed a few things with the .x resources and that sort of stuff, but this is what I'm getting, and that's just kind of strange. And when you look at this and start it from a command area, and let's see here. That's URXVT. Well, I was getting a lot of errors that said something about substituting such and such colors or actually substituting pink for such and such color I'm like what the what are you, why is everything pink I don't like like that at all so kinda strange also getting stuff like this to work right is really difficult for instance if we go back into here and say I was gonna open up uh, Chrome so we'll open up Chrome and then say okay I want my terminal so I open that up it's going to put it side by side and then say I I want to have that FM thing so I've got a hotkey it just keeps putting it side by side and next thing you know you've got these really skinny applications and then you say oh I don't like that let's move them around so you hold it and you hit the alt shift and an arrow and you can move that left and right and you can move it up hey we're, we're getting better and then I found that, okay, I want this to be in the main window. I want these two to be over here. So I highlight it and I hit the Alt-Shift and the side button. 
and now we're there. But in the beginning, I was doing that, and I was going, ah, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't make this work because it's all weird, and I'm not used to it. But you know what? As you can see up here, my runtime, does it say it? It doesn't say. Yes, it does. Uptime, one day, 20 hours. So almost two full days I've been up on this particular one and have not rebooted and everything is good and I'm finally learning all that strange stuff and it's getting good so it's interesting uh, the only thing I would say though is unless you really need to limit yourself on your resources you could do the same thing in KDE and and in a way it would almost be easier you because you can set up your shortcuts your hotkeys to open up stuff within KDE you could make this work as you can see I've got 16 gigs of RAM I don't need to have a lightweight system like this but I do admit it is speedier it is a little bit more responsive I'm getting used to some of the things that it does like just having to highlight over here and I can start typing bring it back over here and start scrolling come back over here and of course there I gotta click to get into there but I could just start working with this again and that is kinda nice how the focus follows but you could do the same thing in KDE most everything is there now they have some really neat uh, command line interface utilities out there but once again you could run those now I run my my IRC actually through a web browser with WeChat because I use a web uh, WeChat relay for that but Ursi is a really good text uh, and you can use WeChat through the text or, or I mean, when I say that I mean the command line interface without any problems in the terminal and there's a lot of really neat th features and things that you can do if resources is an issue for you or CPU uh, isn't beefy enough for some of those because I have tried KDE say on an older system and it just crawls because of its requirements for such intensive resource management. But anyway, I've been rambling, going on, and I probably forgot half the things I wanted to talk about with i3. It is interesting, like I said, Irish is the man to know over there at the uh, Linux distribution community. So go check out his stuff, look at it, see what you can find out. And let me know. I'm curious about you guys out there. Are you a desktop environment kind of guy? Are you a Windows management kind of guy? Do you use a desktop manager? I for one don't like desktop managers. I prefer, especially in Gen 2, log in and go straight to the command line interface. And then from there I decide whether or not I need a GUI or if I want to stay in command line. A lot of times there's no reason for me to go into command line or go into GUI at all. And that's why I don't like to start my system with a desktop manager like GDM or KDM or SLEM. But uh, I'm just curious how you guys use your system. A lot of people that reach out to me and talk to me, they are more of the terminal type. And they like to use i3 or Awesome or Herbsluft WM. And I'm sure I'm getting things like Fluxbox and DWM and a few others that are out there. And if you guys like this kind of thing, uh, maybe next week or in a couple weeks, I'll try to do awesome and take a look at it. And then can I then I can say, you know what? It was easy to do i3 versus awesome, or awesome is oh so much more awesome. <laughs> oh, and that's another thing. Um, one thing that Irish mentions is the configurations. And that Awesome is based out of Lua, and that i3 is mainly just a very simple uh, configuration, which is stored, if we look at this, nano-w.config i3 config. And you will see here how you know, everything is pretty simple. I had this thing here, if I, want, I was trying out making everything float. I was trying, you know, if I just want browser stuff pop-ups to be floating, you know, and then this, this is how to make some stuff with the windows, some executable programs to 
to run with shortcuts like mod I gets my IRC going, mod C gets Chromium running. Uh, if I want to play Minecraft, mod M starts up my Minecraft jar file. Um, Rofi was something I was testing out as an alternative to D menu. And then of course PC Man FM I've set up for my for my file manager and so forth. But it's all quite simple. All right in here. You can set everything up. And like I said, his thing goes right into this and explains it. But this is really very easy to look at. And simple to get going. But it can be very daunting when you first try it out. Because I3, I found very little information when I was trying to get going, and there are no Gen 2 wikis that I know of right now that tell you even how to install it. So it's not difficult if you got a buddy like Irish to point you in the right direction, but it can be a little difficult if you don't know where to begin. They have some excellent material at the I3 website, which I'll make sure to link in the description. And... Uh, Try it out if you like, but most of all, leave me a comment and let me know if you're a window manager kind of guy or a desktop environment kind of guy where you've got the full-blown KDE, GNOME with Unity, everything else. Thanks a lot. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it, and we'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.